And we are off. Thank goodness. I thought we were going to have an issue there. All right, guys. Hey, uh, welcome everybody to study again today. Uh, this is going to be the last study. No study next week. I'm going down to the camp with my dad. I'm going to go do some work. Uh, so, you know, this is going to be one of those good, great studies that I hope people uh, will thoroughly enjoy. Matter of fact, <laughs> it's one of those things where it's always funny. I made a butt out of myself earlier between my grandma and my wife uh, because this study uh, is a reflection of me at all times. Remember that. There's one man that's being, being talked about the most here, and that is me. Uh, so with that, let, uh, let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we come, uh, come unto you again uh, asking for our will to continue to decrease the will of the flesh, and, but the will of the Spirit continue to increase. And let thy word not return unto thee void, but let it accomplish that which you please and prosper in everything and everywhere that you send it. And let this seed continue to fall on good ground in your precious son's name, we pray. And so it is, my friends. So it is. Knowledge, it puffeth, puff, puffeth us up. You know, um, you ever had that guy, uh, and I've been that guy for uh, uh, quite a few years and that because I know some, something more than somebody else, I think I'm better than them. Uh, and the truth is, is that without charity, knowledge can destroy. And what does that mean? Uh, yes, uh, knowledge can save, but without compassion and love on your fellow uh, man or woman, it, ha it serves no purpose. 1 Corinthians 13, 1. And though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become as sounding brass. So when you take two tinkling cymbals and you go, bang, in order to make that noise, that it's vibrating. It's confusion. And though I have the gift of prophecy and I understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I, that I could remove mountains and I have not charity, I am nothing. And this is the love, the love that knows no bounds. So first, we want to discuss some of the things that's going on outside in this world. Uh, and uh, I want to, I put my documents up. Hey guys, I've got a, I've got a, a, a Zoom court date coming up uh, with Aaron Wilder. I'm probably going to uh, attend this on the grounds. I just want to see if I can challenge jurisdiction. Uh, Brother Gary's going about it a different way. I had hoped to have a, a live stream last week. I just haven't had much time lately, uh, but what I want to do is share my thoughts before we dive into this uh, uh, study today on the current trajectory of not only my court case, but where and why the show that's presented to us will continue to de degenerate, and that's because die vision is what, what's happening here, and die is the prefix taken directly from the Greek meaning twice, double, or twofold, so what's vision? Well, vision, the ability to see, okay, seeing they see not, hearing they hear not. So it's not just physical sight, right? Sight or eyesight or something that you can see inside the mind's eye. You got an imagination, right? You, do you? Okay. A picture that you see in your mind, something that you see or dream, especially as part of a religious or supernatural experience. So vision, die vision is twofold, okay? It's the split. It's the two. And that we're going to see right here in Genesis 3, 3. But of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, you shall not eat of it. Neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And pluralized there, you shall be as gods, not be as God. It's plural, duality world, right? Knowing good and evil. How many is that? That's division. You'll see it as we get to the end of this. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and the tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. So not only did the conscious mind, the subconscious, uh, uh, the desires and the flesh below uh, trap uh, the, the man, the male. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. All right? It is imperative that as we move forward that you understand how and why the show is aimed at the windows to the soul. Those two eyes are the windows to the soul, and seeds planted within those two eyes reap 
what is sown shall one day reap. There's going to be a harvest from that sowing. Okay? So faith without works is dead. God inactive is faithless. All right? So faith attached to dead things breathes life into mere images. Knowledge without knowing the ledger, right? Without love, feeling, emotion, desire is void of God. Because God is love. God is good. And you have to make thine eye single. You have to come to the land of no division. Uh, it is your belief in the idol, the image, the zodiac. And I'm going to tell people over here, there's people over here that believe in like the 12 signs of the zodiac. And that if you, if you have this sign on your, on your patch and this sign on your patch or uh, you have the star of Remphan in your house, you're a satanic worshiper. But let me ask, ask this, people. Who give power to the image? Where does the power begin? Within the mind. And so the subconscious believes it to be true, so it goes out to set what? That reality into motion. So we go giving power to mere what? Symbols. Symbols. Signs. Stars. Hey, is Saturn alive, folks? Is the is 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 the actual planet Saturn alive? Planate? You ever looked at it through your uh, your own telescope, not the show on TV? It looks pretty. It looks pretty weird. It looks like a little two D image up there, and it blinks like a light. It is your belief in the idol, the image, the zodiac, the stars, the flat physical earth, the Mandela effect, etc., etc., that activates the power of manifestation. The symbols have no power. And why is that? Hey, does this symbol have life in it? No. No, no. The symbols have no power. The dead have no life. It is man who is what? He breathes image into the beast. And that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Is this a physical reality name and number? Maybe Mark of Cain? Remember the Mark of Cain Abel got for killing his brother? Revelation 13, 18. Here is wisdom though. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man. And his number is 600, three score and six. So six, six, six. It's just three, three sixes, right? It's separate, separate, separate. Instead of holy, holy, holy. What is love? If I ask you what is love, what do you say it is? Where does, where does it happen? Right. In that invisible place, right? It's invisible. Can uh, I walk up to you and tell you I know how much you love me? No. Can you correctly ascertain how much you love somebody? After much contemplation, you can think about it. You can, you can even talk about it, but you can't correctly apply deep love. Right? It's a feeling. It's an emotion. You get what I'm saying? That's what I'm trying to get. Okay. It's within the heart. Okay? Proverbs 23, 7. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is what? He or she. So to protect the windows to the soul is vitally important. 1 Corinthians 8 T. And if any man think that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing, yet as he ought to know. But if any man love God, the same is known of him. As con concerning, therefore, the eating of those things that are offered in sacrifice on the idols, we know that an idol is nothing in the world. Hold on, let's back up. So what we're going to talk about here is how do we uh, act in the place uh, and how we carry ourselves around those that are just completely asleep and still maintain our sanity, right? So the world believes in idols. The world believes that the star of Remphan has power. The world believes that there's a power external to man. When the, the word of God dwells where? Within us. The kingdom of heaven is where? Within. That next place we go to, uh, we, can, we can think about it, but we're called to bring the kingdom of heaven when? 
It's at hand. Go you preaching the kingdom of heaven when? Now. Not later. Not a time afar off. Right now. Paul knew this. He says there is no idol. Idol's no thing. And that there's none other but God. How many is God? One. Idols have no tongue to talk. They have no feet to walk. No hands to work. They have not a heart to love, nor spirit mind to think. The only image with any power is the one we breathe life into. For though there be that are called gods, whether in heaven or earth, as there be gods many and lords many, but to us there is but one God, the Father, of whom all things, and we in him, and one Lord, Jesus Christ by whom are all things, and we by him. 1 Corinthians 8, 7, Howbeit there is not in every man that knowledge. There's not that knowledge in every man. Why? Most men live their entire lives, and they never ask the question of who, why, when, what, and where. What is their purpose here? And so for some man, that's, that's fine. For some with conscience of the idol unto this hour, eat it as a thing offered unto an idol. And their conscience being weak is what? Defiled. But meat commandeth, commandeth not to God. What's, what's he saying here? If you believe in your heart that if you eat, eat a chicken leg that you're going to burn in the pits of hell, what, what happens if you eat a chicken leg? You make hell on where? Earth. That's what Job, remember Job, does, Job creates hell for himself in the book of Job. Read the book of Job and really read the book of Job knowing that Job created his own hell with his thinking. But for neither, if we eat, are we the better? Neither, if we eat not, are we the worse? But take heed, lest by any means this liberty of yours become a stumbling block to them that are weak. Now he's going to give the opposite side of this. For if any man see that which has knowledge said it meet in the idol's temple, shall not the conscience of him which is weak be emboldened to eat those things which are offered to idols. So what he's saying, let's quantify this. If somebody, if you know for a fact that there is no idols in this earth and you go and eat at a temple while you're, while you're trying to uh, proselytize somebody else, right? And he sees you over there and he has a belief in idols and then he goes sits in that, sacri that temple of sacrifice and eats it. That, that food sacrificed idol. Believing the idol to be real, what have you done? You've made your brother stumble. We are all at different stages. This is what we're, what's being talked about. And through thy knowledge shall thy weak brother perish for whom Christ died. This is to whom much is given... What's the rest? That's right. Is it a sin to ignorantly do something in unbelief or unknowing? No. It can't be because you don't know any better. Oh. But those who've come to a knowledge of Christ, do they suffer Him to sacrifice how many times? Twice? You put Him to an open shame? Do you deny the truth to which you've been given? Oh, oh, great. Oh, great is the offense when you do know. Okay? But when you sin so against the brethren and wound their weak conscience, you sin against Christ. Wherefore, if meat take make my brother to offend, I will eat no flesh while the world standeth, lest I make my brother offend. Hey, that's a pretty hard set of scriptures that most people don't get. You ever read this chapter right here? It's pretty hard, wasn't it? It's pretty hard to get it because you have to be at the correct place uh, to understand it. Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify me. Hey, man, we're going to take two concepts today, and we're going to bring them together. Uh, one of these is, is, is stones. Uh, and they, took stone, they took stones up to stoner, right? Uh, 1 Corinthians 9, 8. Say I things as a man, or saith the law the same also. For it is written in the law of Moses, Thou shalt not muzzle the mouth of an ox that treadeth out the corn. His question is, Does God take care of oxen? Remember, folks, 
all all mountains, all hills, all valleys, all everything in the Bible is always talking about men. In some form, metaphor or allegory. We're gonna prove that again today. Or saith he he saith this altogether for our sakes, for our sakes, no doubt this is written, that he that ploweth should plow in hope. Alright? Okay? So you're running the plow, all right? And that he that thresheth in hope should be partaker of his hope. So the threshing floor, right, is the action. So you planted the seed, the works, reap the benefits, okay? So that's what that's what it means. If we have sown unto you spiritual things, it is it a great thing we shall reap carnal? Hold up, what did he just say there? Remember last week we talked about putting away the former conversation of the old man and putting on the right spirit of the new man, which is in God and righteousness, right? So if it's in God and righteousness, it has to be in right thinking. That means you're no longer living in the past, the history, but you're today bringing in the kingdom of heaven, which builds a what? The next moment. So if you're in right thinking... The seed that you sow will reap good. If you sow bad seeds, what's going to come? Bad. The seed sown is internal, spiritual mind. And the reaping of the wheat and the tares will be die too. Vision. Until the last day when the wheat shall be gathered into the house of God and the tares burned. Forgotten. True forgiveness, by the way. This is the power of God within men, within you. The power is up here, and most men never figure it out. If others be partakers of this power over you, are, are not we rather? So somebody else can, can take control over you with this knowledge up here. Never lies, we have not used this power, but suffer all things lest we should hinder the gospel of Christ. Do you know that which minister about holy things live of the things of the temple? And they which are at altars are partakers with the altar. Altar, even so hath the Lord ordained they which preach the gospel should uh, live of the gospel. But I have used none of these things. Why? Because good men don't wish to rule other men. Neither have I written these things that it should be done so unto me. For if it were better for me to die than that any man should make my glory uh, void. For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of, for the necessity is laid upon me. Yea, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. Galatians 3.27 For as many of you has been baptized in Christ, Christ hath put on Christ. So the baptism, baptism, baptism of Christ is the second birth, of, uh, the rebirth, not the birth of woman. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For how many of you are there? For you are all how many? One. In Christ Jesus. 1 Corinthians 9, 17. For if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward. But if against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me. The willingness to control the thoughts, the inner desires, and to maintain focus and discipline the faculties of mind. And what I mean by that is to stop allowing access in through the different avenues. For though I be free from all men, yet I have made myself servant unto all that I may gain the more. And unto the Jews I became a Jew that I might gain the Jews. And to them that are under the law as under the law that I may, might gain them that are under the law. To them that are without the law as without law, being not without law to God, but, but under the law to Christ, that I might gain them that are without law. To the weak I became weak, that I might gain the weak. I have made all things to all men, that I might by all men save some. This is a hard saying. Who can know it? Who can uh, think about this? in a way that uh, would make sense. You ever read this particular set of scriptures? It's pretty tough, huh? Yeah. Thought, I've been thinking about these scriptures for a long time. I, I try to go after the hard ones. 
to the Jew, the IEW, the W, division, the physical fence sense man, and to the Greek worldly wisdom, Fox News regurgitator, medical misinformation repeater, ever learning men never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. To the satanic lawless man, to the carnal man, the beast of the field, and even to the religious man who still has no idea who and where Christ is, I become as they are so I can reach them. Babes own milk cannot suffer meat. It's one of my uh, biggest faults is uh, this particular set of script. This, this study and the last study uh, seem to uh, be one of my um, biggest issues and we're going to see in 1 Corinthians 9.25 uh, that I have it highlighted for a reason and it's not for anybody else's uh, problem but my own. And this is I do it for the gospel's sake. And I'm going to give everybody right now, you know, this weekend I was at, I kind of changed the study from Friday and Saturday. We did inventory. And I told Candy afterwards, I told Candy about the guys in there talking about the highest cases of of COVID-19 ever and a guy sitting in the corner with his mask on. I'm talking about in the corner, you know, wanting, you could physically see how scared he was to be there and do this inventory. You know, that guy as he's talking to everybody else uh, inside, uh, do I have anything in common with him uh, to go sit and try to, uh, you know, bring him some meat? This guy's not even ready for milk. He's literally at, and I'm serious, guys. We walk in, there's 40 of us. We're doing inventory at work. Uh, and I'm not going to use the man's name. He's in the corner of, of, of this big conference room, and he's sitting over there with his mask, and he's just as close to that corner as he could be. And all he talked about the whole time was how bad the cases were, how many people had COVID-19. It just, he could, re, he could regurgitate to me the 6 o'clock run for 30 minutes from Fox News. But he had he'd lost something, folks. What he lost? Life. There he was, scared to death. Of who? His brothers, sisters. They've separated us one from another. And this I do for the gospel's sake. So I lower myself down. Do I make an enemy out of this man? And listen, there's more. This is just the worst case. No, I don't. I have to learn to do better. And I did this weekend. Know you not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize, so run that you may obtain. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. What's temperate? That means you can fluctuate. She's hot, I raise myself up to hot. You're cold, I raise myself down to cold. I got uh, a little heated earlier with my grandma. You know, I'm sitting there. I did. Why? Why is it? Why did? Why can y'all get me so heated up though? Tell me why. Think really. Think about it. Tell me why. And other people don't. It's called. It starts with a P. The word we're looking for. What well, passion for y'all? That's right. It's not. It's not that. It's not passion outside. It's the. It's the love that I have within me for you too. That. Make make me want to shove the information down your throat so you see it. It's because love, emotions tied to it. It's we have to see this. It's true. I see it. I see the the, the need for the correction. It, but it's because of love. It's because of the passion. But every man striveth for the mastery and is temperate in all things. Now that that they do that to obtain a corruptible crown. But we are incorruptible, folks. We are incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air, but I keepeth under my body and bring it what? Into subjection. Lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be cast away. 
So we have to come to a recognition of the truth. For the masses, what is the greatest motivator? Well, self-interest too, but fear. Fear, right? Fear is the greatest motivator of mankind because he refuses to accept his own personal responsibility for his moral actions. Man believes he can relinquish this authority, author, right, to another and still maintain his freedom. The truth is what? If you, if you, if you hand over your authority to another, what happens? You're no longer the author of your story. So that essentially makes you a slave. Okay? God's grace is so much more powerful of a motivator than fear. Love is the deepest motivator. Only love can produce not only willing obedience, but also lasting obedience. So this is the part, part, part where we understand, we start getting a perception of this reality, right? Power is not as powerful as perception of power. And what do I mean by that? If they feign and they don't actually have to beat you and you still comply, what, what's more powerful? Well, that perception. Yeah, because they're sitting inside the temple of God proclaiming themselves to be. If you're being motivated by fear, rules, anger, or some other emotion, it usually only lasts while that emotion is there. Love is a being, B-E-I-N-G. It's a state of the heart. It lasts even past the initial emotion. Right, so let's, quant let's, let's qualify that statement. After I showed my butt in there and I got a little heated, and I calm back down. I still come in here, maintain my composure, and we talked about it, and I got through a lot better than when I did in there, didn't I? Why? Because love knows how to come back down. Right? You know, it, it's not, it wasn't anger in there. That was passion. One first John two fourteen, I've written unto you fathers because you have known him that what is from the beginning. I've written unto you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God abideth where? Where is it? In you. And you have overcome what? The wicked one. First John four four, you are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Romans twelve twenty one, one two two one. I love when I see this. In the Bible. Be not overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. And look, the occultists out there, there's whole genres of people that are putting together gematria and numbers right now that get on get on the internet and have labeled everything satanic in the world. Everything. Everything in the world satanic. And what have they given power to? They used to do it. Yes, that language is there, but can you see it? And then what? Not give power to the image of the beast. Notice it. Back up. Fear of the Jew, uh, the, Jew the Greek, the black, the white, the Chinese, etc. While at the same time refusing that all creation follows the rules set by its creator. Man can only mate with his kind, guys. Right? Each kind with his kind. Hey, can I go out there and make the frog mate with the alligator? No. Nope. Man can only mate with his kind. Generic man in the Bible includes male and female. Includes all vessels in which the spirit of the Father dwells. Hold up, let's, let's quote. We, we got to talk about this because there's people out there saying that some people have the serpent seed. That there's, they're reptilians from the, the stars of Pleiades. Where's the proof, folks? Well, you get on TV and you see a digital glitch on TV. That means they're uh, a reptilian. They're shape-shifting. Come on, folks. What did you see it on? TV. Vision extended. Lies told through your vision. The culture must be separated. And that is why we are in a hodgepodge of culture, right? Uh, what's it called? I'm all the melting pot. They told you that your whole life. You're in the melting pot of cultures. That means we're going to dissolve all culture and destroy everybody and make them uh, one hive mind. Uh, I, can't, I can't do anything about that. That's already done. Okay? It's already done. The legal fictions created by man didn't just start. That is the beginning of your idol. As all things written on paper, the only power is that which we attach to it. 
We give life to any and all images. I don't understand. You can either make an image good or you can make it what? Bad. My thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. My ways are higher. We're going to see this. You are not to be so. You are to overcome the world. Zero fear of condemnation. Let us now look at some scripture examples of how I know this to be the truth. This is the beauty of the scriptures because they do reveal themselves to you. If you believe not his writings, how will you believe my words? Oh, let's do that. I did want to show that. Let's see. Uh, just and look, we're not we're not making fun of this guy or anything else like that, guys. We're not going to do that. We're not going to go bash this guy, but I did want to show y'all uh, this particular conversation with this one guy. It was pretty rough, but I want to show you. All right, I just want to show you how it goes uh, with people. See if everybody can see this. And it does fit in the study today, okay? Note, Jesus is called Yeshu, uh, Yesku, uh, Yeschu in the Talmud. A Hebrew acronym, which means may his name and memory be blotted out. Unfortunately, many Christians today pray to a Jesus using his name. Let me ask this. In Matthew chapter 6, where does it tell you to pray? Anybody remember? Before I, before I write this. Say it again, Mama. In thy closet, in secret, and shall it shall be what? Rewarded unto you. So as a man thinketh in his heart, so shall he be. All right? I don't converse or pray to any name written on paper. I converse and pray in secret to the God within. Right? And it goes on and on. And what, look what happens down here. You call out to the Talmudic God, Brandon. I say, little man of great fear. There's only one true living God, and His Spirit is in the mind of man. I call out to no thing. I seek the kingdom within. What part of my speech can you not understand? And he keeps going on about Jesus and this word, and then the word Joshua. And everything else, he keeps calling me a, a, a deceiver, a Talmud worshiper, and everything else. Guys, do I worship the Talmud? What's wrong with, what's wrong with the uh, uh, religion of the Jews? It's filled with what? Hate. This guy's boiling in feces. Uh, Mary's a whore. I'll, if you if you've never read the Talmud, it's disgusting. It's like twenty different writings, okay. And uh, he doesn't know where the word of God is. But I this go, I, this happens to me all the time. And why? Listen, folks, you spend half your life finding a reason not to have a brother. And I, guys, I kept telling him that I loved him, whatever, and may you come back to the truth another day, and that just made him more angry. Jesus went unto the uh, Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again unto the temple, and all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and the Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery, and when they had, had set her in the midst... They say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery. In the very act. We caught her. We got her. In the very act of it, we got her uh, in, in adultery. Now Moses in the law commanded us that should, uh, such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? Of course. What do you think? The literal letter killeth. The spirit giveth life. So we're about to start casting stones at her. It is the Spirit which giveth life. John 10, 32. Many good works have I showed you from my Father. For which of these works do you stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy. And because that thou, be a, being a man, makest thyself God. And Yahushua answered them, Is it not written in your law, I said you are gods? Why do they want to stone him then, if, it, if it's a good work? They're reading their scriptures. What's wrong? What's wrong with the scriptures that they're reading? They have no spirit attached to them. They're reading the scriptures in literal interpretation. The letter 
the literal killeth. The spirit giveth life. We'll finish John 8, 6. This they said, tempting him, that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down, and with his fingers, he started writing on the ground, right? He who without sin shall cast the first stone. So he who has pulled the log out of his own eye. The facts of life. The stones of scriptures with which we use to justify our reliance on the things of this world are the literal interpretations of the scriptures void of justice, mercy, and truth and love. Growth is in stages. Remember we talked about as a Jew, I became a Jew. As a Greek, I became a Greek. Okay? The literal is the milk. You have to go through that stage. Finding the living, living waters is stage two. Remember the uh, Seraphonician woman at the water well? Uh, the, or maybe the Samaritan woman? She said, I give, you, I give you to drink the living waters. Remember last week we did I am the bread of life. Is it the brand, bread um, from a uh, man which fell in the wilderness which fathers died? Is it the literal bread or is it the living bread? It's the living bread. I give you this day, your daily, is that food? No. I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For here, hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither yet now are you able. John 8, 7. So when they continued to ask him, him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him cast a stone at her. Or how wilt thou say, uh, and Matthew 7, 4, How wilt thou say to thy brother, Let me pull out the mote of thine own eye, and behold, a beam is thine, in, in thine own eye. Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. The stoning of uh, Nathan in the books of, book of Acts is from what? It's over and over again. They justify themselves. They wash the outside of the cup. The religious crowd cannot see the truth which is within. I am the bread of life. The living waters. John 7, 37. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Yahushua stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Well, are you coming? Uh, who are you coming unto? Life. Are you going to drink it? Are you going to have life more abundantly? He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow uh, rivers of living water. Did it say out of the scriptures it will flow living waters? No, the scriptures are but, but a learning path. Belief is what we attach our emotion to. Our attaching of the desires and emotion dictates the inward man's real belief, not the outer hypocrite who says but does not. The action must follow the saying. The living waters must be strengthened. We're going to talk about this in Psalm 104, by the way. But John 7, 39, But this he spake of the Spirit, not... Not of the scriptures, he spake this of the spirit, which they that believe on him should receive, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given. I mean, that, that word uh, given is added, because that Yahushua was not yet glorified. Psalm 104. And I'm probably not going to read the whole psalm, but I want, I want to, I want to give a, a, an overall view of what's going on here. So let's read the first uh, four, and then we'll skip to six, and then we'll skip to 15. Blessed the Lord, O my soul, Lord my God, thou art very great. Thou art clothed with honor and ma ma majesty. Okay, so we're talking about an outer garment. A garment's the, the outside of something, right? Okay. Who covereth thyself with light as with a garment, who stretcheth out the heavens like a curtain, who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters, who maketh the clouds his chariot, who walketh upon the wings of the wind. Okay, so what are we talking about? It's biblical language again. And when thou prayest, thou shalt be not be as the hypocrites are. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corner of the streets, that they may be see, see, seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when thou prayest, they go enter into thy closet. And the Father which heareth in secret shall reward thee what? Openly. 
For the things of the the things of the spiritual sown in the spirit shall reap what? Things in the carnal. And he maketh his angels spirits, his ministers of flaming fire. Who laid this foundation of the earth that it shall not be removed forever? Thou coverest it with the deep as with a garment. The water stood, stood above the mountains. The water stand above the men, the direction of. Right? The waters. Let's go down to one, uh, Psalm 104, 15. And just to verify that we're, we're talking about men. And wine that maketh glad the heart of men and oil to make his face shine, and bread which strengthen man's heart. So can bread strengthen his heart? Can oil make his face to really shine? Well, I guess it could. And wine that makes the heart glad? Of course it can. But biblically speaking, we're talking about spiritual things. The, the natural man cannot discern the things of the spirit. He doesn't get it. Oil is the anointing. Anoint my head with oil, right? The bread is the life. The wine is action. It makes glad. Make glad the heart of men, right? The simplicity. What's the first miracle that uh, uh, Yahushua does? Oh, well, how do we turn water into wine? Wine is at, he does this at the what kind of feast is it you remember marriage union of the male female I, uh, two shall be made how many one <laughs> right uh isaiah 55 1 oh everyone uh though everyone at thirst is come ye to the waters and he that hath no money come you buy and eat Yea, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Is he talking about wine and milk? How do you buy this stuff without money? You can't buy the Holy Ghost, folks. It's a gift freely given. His glory will he not give to another. He's already given it to you. Isaiah 55, 2. Wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for, for that which satisfieth not? Hearken diligently unto me, and eat you that which is good, and let your soul delight in itself in fatness. Incline your ear, and come uh, unto me here, and your show, soul shall live, and I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Huh. Hosea 9.1 Rejoice not, O Israel, for joy as other people, for thou hast gone a whoring from thy God, thou hast loved a reward eat upon every corn floor. The floor and the wine press shall not feed them, and the new wine shall fail in her. They shall not dwell in the Lord's land, but Ephraim shall return to Egypt, and they shall eat unclean things in Assyria. So Egypt is always spiritual bondage, right? So when Israel goes to bondage, it's always in Egypt, Egypt and Gomorrah. Uh, Egypt, Egypt is, is spiritual bondage. So they shall not offer wine offerings to the Lord, neither shall they be pleasing unto him. Their sacrifices shall be unto them as the bread of mourners. All that eat thereof shall be polluted. For the bread of their soul shall not come into the house of the Lord. So here we go again. People tell me that the Bible is not about allegories and metaphors, but it's all about metaphors and allegories. Everything in the Bible is evokes thought. Blessed, blessed, is the man, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. For his delight is in the, delight is in the law of the Lord, and his law doth, doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree. A tree. Oh, you, you, know, you know, a tree that produces what? Fruit. If the tree be bad, it'll produce what? Okay, so the tree is planted and his roots goes down in the ground. And he's planted by the water. What water are you planted by? Is it the chaos? The storm? Or is it the quiet waters? And this tree that is planted by the waters that bringeth forth his fruit in his season, his leaves also shall not wither. And whatsoever he doeth shall he prosper. The ungodly are not so... Ah, oh, these ungodly, but they're like uh, chaff and which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. 
For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. So I wanted to continue to show this descriptive biblical language that happens over and over again. We want to talk about this water. There's a reason. There's a reason. Because what we are getting away from is this uh, literal uh, interpretation where like someone like uh, damned Israeli, okay? The name above all names is this, is this name written on, on paper called Jesus. And I asked him a question. So the people before 1600s, they just died. And it, it, matter of fact, you'll go back and you'll see he gave me, let's do this, let's go back. I asked him, I asked him, I guess the men and women living before the letter J was introduced into the English language, they had no chance, right? Why? Has the letter J always been here? No. No, it hasn't. You are afraid and your religious indoctrination is your guide. Well, here he goes, right here. He spells it out for me. It was Jesus. That was his name, I.E. wasn't a J. So let me ask this again. Is the name above all names? The, the, na the name Jesus, which has been changed and manipulated by men? Or is the word of God, which is, I and my Father shall dwell in you, and we shall make our, my abode in you, the name above all names? Which would be, if I state, if I state this right now, if Mama, you ask me, Brandon, uh, or what's your name? I am Brandon. Where's God at in that statement? There he is. Greater is he in me than he that is in the world. That's his name. And his glory will he not give another. Okay? The entire world is made on the image of the beast. Okay? That's why they take pictures of us and put licenses and registers and all that stuff because they take a picture of the beast, which is the flesh bag, and they make they give power to that image. We have to turn the water into wine. This is the next stage. There's three stages. I'm calling it three stages. There's probably more. Your first stage of uh, religious uh, or spiritual awakening. You'll remember this. My first stage of spiritual awakening. What did I do? Come on, tell the truth. Angry. angry, and what did I do with it? I threw literal stones. Remember? I remember this day. It breaks my heart when I told my daughter. Oh, man. I was throwing literal stones. You get what I'm saying? You remember? I remember. Yeah. I remember. Broke my heart now that I look back on it. Stage I had to go through. Then you find out the spiritual, the water. Okay, and that's controlling this up here. Now we have a next stage to go, and this is for everybody out there. This is going to be a beautiful beauty because now we're learning how to become the Jew. And it's not become a Jew, Jew, uh, really. It's to lower my reduction in capacity. That way I don't lead anybody astray. It's control. It's discipline. You're the discipliner. Because you are at a what? Higher level of operation than those around you. So you have greater moral responsibility. John 2.1 And the third day was a marriage in Cana of Galilee. And the mother of Yahushua was there. And both Yahushua was called and his disciples to the marriage. Of course they were. And when they wanted wine, the mother of uh, Jesus saith unto them, They have no wine. And Yahushua saith unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. His mother saith unto the servants, Whosoever he saith, whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. And there were there six water pots of stone. What's the number of man? Six. How many water pots of stone was there? Six, after them the manner of the purifying of what kind? 
the Jew, the W, containing two or three firkins apiece. Remember? Six hearts of stone. The water is inside the vessel, is all. We're at the marriage union of the conscious mind and the subconscious, the male and the female. Hearts and desires will manifest the fruit of what is sown. Yahushua saith unto them, Fill the water pots with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he saith unto them, Draw out now and bear unto the governor of the feast. Bear unto the controller of this here feast. And they bear it. And when the ruler of the feast had tasted the water, that it was made wine, and knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew. So the servant, remember, you're always making yourself a servant. The ruler will never understand the speech that I'm talking about. It's the reason why the governor is not on the same par as he made himself a what? A servant. The governor of the feast called the bridegroom and saith unto him, Every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine, and when men have well drunk, then that which is worse. But thou hast kept the good wine until now. This beginning of the miracles did uh, Yahushua in Cana of Galilee. And what did he do? Can y'all read it? He manifested his glory. And his disciples believed on him. Revelation 21, five. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. Okay, hold up. If you're making something new, that means you had the ability to what? Change. Change. Close. What else? Looking for a different C word. Create. If you had the ability to create chaos and create uh, animosity, create hate, what is the other opposite side of that create love create peace create harmony you have to make the new new hey is there a reason why you don't put uh, new wine in the old bottles y'all remember that or else it does but we put new wine into new wine skins bottles what whatever Behold, I make all things new. And that shows that the inner matches the outer. Do y'all get that? And he saith unto me, Right, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. And I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful, the unbelieving, the abominable, the murderers, the whoremongers, the sorcerers, the idolaters, liars, shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And what's the second death, folks? What's being twice dead plucked up by the roots? What is it? It's to live your whole life not knowing thinking you are the spiritual, the, the carnal man. Hey, uh, what's his name? Antoine LaVey, LaVey Satanism from Wikipedia, where we show, where we've shown their, their, not their principles, right? That's twice dead. At least they're honest. They want to be that way. That's what they want to be. At, hey, at, can we at least say, Antoine LaVey, thank you for being honest? It's the people out there that try to trick, deceive that are even worse than those devils. At least those devils are honest devils. Nothing wrong. There's really nothing wrong with that in my book. At least he's being honest. You can't ask for anything more out of people of the world. What can you ask for for people living in the world? I don't think anything. To the Jew, I became a Jew. The meaning. So I talked, I, I forgot to put the slide in there. That's why I <laughs> told the story earlier, right? <laughs> well, I worked this weekend and through the various trials and tribulations of this journey of life that I am on, I, ha I have learned much better uh, when to become a Jew. 
when to become a Greek, and when to not cast my pearls before swine. This is all learning discipline and uh, the ability to, uh, to, uh, to discern. We did inventory this weekend, and 85% of the men and women present at work discussed the non-reality. Being. So if I say being, right, that's, that's an active principle. That's in action. You get that? This being, which is presented to them by the digital ma makers, it means this image is living on the inside of people. That's why they talk about it 24-7. As a seasoned veteran whose salt still retained its savor, I cherry-pickered, I cherry-pickered, I cherry-picked uh, people to talk to. Because you know it's very hard for me. To, uh, it's very, very. It's been been a very big struggle for me to be in situations where people talk about all this stuff and keep my mouth shut. It's been it's been a great struggle for me because my initial emotion is to try to save somebody. But here's the truth: those who willingly have their eyes closed, you cannot save. Uh, Grandma told me this last week. We were talking on the phone. Uh, I'm not going to say anybody's names, but we were talking about a certain group that thought that, that believed that COVID-19 was real. What did you say? When I said, why haven't you talked to them? It does no good. You can't have logical conversations with, with illogical people, can you? And that is the purpose of this, this division from this reality being presented to us. So, uh, when you feel that way, and I did have a few conversations with people, I don't talk on this level right here. Are they ready for this level? I've had to learn this. I've got to scale Brandon back. Right? I have to scale it back. And a babe still on milk cannot stand meat. This balance is how wisdom is correctly used with discernment. The dis disciplining of the disciples who is always with us. All right, let me get, get through this thing. We're getting a little late in the tooth. Faith, hope, and love, and the greatest is love. 1 Timothy 5, 21, I charge thee before God and Lord Jesus Christ and the elect angels that thou observe these things without preferring one before another, doing nothing by partiality. What, what are we saying right there? There you go. Love, uh, uh, the first commandment is the greatest commandment. Love, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, heart mind, body, and soul. The second is like unto, unto like it, which is what? Love thy neighbor as thyself. Lay hands suddenly on no man, neither be, be talk, partaker of other men's sins. Keep thyself pure. Drink no longer water. But hey, use a little wine for thy stomach's sake and thine often infirmities. Now so the literal, literal interpreter will go, all right, that means we can drink wine, Right? That's not what it means, folks. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him. He had compassion on him. And went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine. Pouring in faith, hope, and love. Pouring it in. And set him on his beast. And brought him to an inn. And took care of him. Drink no longer water, psychological, spiritual truth, okay? But use a little wine, a little love, a little compassion, okay? For thy stomach's sake. But also inactive. So when you turn the water into wine, it is the actual faith that becomes what? We'll go back. Right here. This beginning of the miracles did uh, Yahushua in Cana of Galilee and manifested his, forth his glory. So when the water became wine was the beginning of him what? putting God in action.
God is not inactive. He is active. He is life. So the equal and opposite, so not, inactive is death. But God is good and God is love. So everything, all the power that you put in destructive thoughts is not of God because it's not righteousness, right? Living, no ledge. No ledger stands between me and the Holy Spirit within me. 1 Corinthians 6, 12. All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. What does that mean? You used to have a big problem with these scriptures, right? But the simplicity, the simplicity of the scriptures is their greatest stumbling block. That means I will subject myself to no man. Meats for the belly and belly for the meats, but God shall destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God hath uh, both raised up the Lord and will also raise up by his own power. Know you not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of an harlot? God forbid a harlot's inter, a, a di, di, divided. She's fornicated. What? Know you not that he that which is joined to an harlot is one body? body? For two saith he shall be one flesh. But he that is joined unto the Lord is how many? One. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. That means you have two vision. What, know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which you have a God and you are not your own? Sorry, guys, I've got to speed it up. The kids are getting restless. Has the no ledge, the no ledger, You've gained, set you apart from who uh, from who you are. Is the literal stones the image you give life to? Or has the water become wine through right thinking and is, it shines forth as the sun in your Father's kingdom? My, uh, Matthew 26, 26, And as they were eating, Yahushua took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Now does he mean the literal take, eat, and this is my body? No. Hey, let me ask you this. When I say take, eat, this is my body. Do you have a body? Do you have life? Do you have consciousness? Do you have awareness? Where is it that God dwells? And he took the cup and gave thanks. He gave it to them saying, drink you all of it. Drink the living waters. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed of, for the of many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And where, where is this Father's kingdom? The kingdom of God is within. So on this day, on that day, when you turn the water into the fruit of the vine, which is the the making, the God in action. You drink it new. There's an equal and opposite in the scriptures also. Strong drink and wrong thinking is of the devil. You'll see these in the scriptures too. Okay? The uh, whore that rides atop the beast of Revelation is drunk with the uh, wine, wine of fortification. Okay? Well, do you think she's drunk with a literal wine? No, well, it's fornication. It's two. It's knowing both good and evil. You have to make thine eye single. May this message find each of your hearts. Brothers and sisters, I have less time than I used to. I'm, and here's the, here's the great thing. I'm actually applying myself at work uh, greater than I have the last few years. And the reason for that is I have a goal. Uh, that I want to see accomplished. Um, the goal is to really uh, go off grid at some point. Not completely off grid. I don't have to be, but have my own set of land with my family. Uh, I've got a son that loves hunting and fishing. I don't think we're going to be happy until we, uh, true happiness until we provide that, that kind of life for him. Uh, I think our family has grown to the point to where uh, we're ready to quit this infighting and uh, work together as a family unit. So I put more time in at work here lately. So that leaves less time uh, for you two. And I've thought about it. I've thought about, you know, branching out with YouTube and other things. And I, I just can't ch ever charge for this. This is something that's been freely given to me. And, you know, freely I shall, I, uh, I shall freely I receive and freely I continue to give. 
Um, that's just something that's in, in my heart. I believe it, so I give power to that notion. If I was to start charging for this, uh, I just don't think it'd be right. I'd be the same hypocrite that I claim everybody else is. So other than that, we're going to start working. No man or woman can subject me to hell or bind me to idols because I give them no power. If I agree with a thing, so it is. And my word then becomes my bond. Your yea is yea and your no is no. Not in the state, I'm not in the state of sounding brass confusion uh, in a general sense, I'm, uh, which is confusion, is the mixture of several things, promiscuous. Promiscuous means to mix. That's all it is. That's what the Bible's about. This pattern. Can you, can, are you starting to see the patterns? The patterns in the Bible are over and over. Second Peter 3, 4 and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. For this they are willingly ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. <laughs> the earth is the foundation, the altars of earth, which the treasures in the earthen vessels, you know, the jars of clay, What's the potter's? Come on, what's the uh, the potter's vessel where he's where he's work? You know what I'm talking about. Y'all don't ever know. Y'all don't ever. Y'all don't ever help me out in here. <laughs> Looking straight at you. You know what I'm trying to say. Whereby the world that what then was being overflowed, overflowed with water perished, but the heavens and earth which are now by the same word are kept in store. Uh, that's because the word of God lives in where. Men. Men. And reserved under fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing that one day is with the Lord is a thousand years and a thousand years is one day. Hey, hey, will you seek this kingdom at hand? Hey, listen to me, folks. Listen to me. If you can move that mountain and you can take all the negative stuff away, how long does a day seem when it's bad? Huh? How long does a day seem when it's good? We build our heavens and our hells. Will you seek the kingdom at, have, uh, at hand? His glory will he not give to another, and he is not a God afar off. Go you preaching the kingdom of God is now, and put off the former, old conversation, old man, and with right thinking put on the new spirit of mind, manifesting the righteousness of God. Ephesians 4.4, 4, there is one body, one spirit, even as you are called, and the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all, and through all, and in you all. But he that is joined unto the Lord is how many spirits? One. Creature. That which is created, every being besides the creator, or everything not self-existent, right? I am and my name will I not give to another. I am Brandon. Doesn't mean I'm the, the, the great I am. But I know which temple he dwells in. Who can ever take that from me? No one. Why? It's, yours. it's mine. That's right. So the name above all names is what? I am. And I give honor to my mother and father who gave me what name? Brandon Albert. Hey, it's a beautiful thing. He who is in me is greater than the garment that surrounds me. So this thing right here, this garment, is not me. The only unpardonable sin is what? Blaspheming the Holy Spirit. Okay? Denying one's conscience is denying the Holy Spirit. Okay? And that's making it void of power. 2 Corinthians 5.17 uh, 5, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. So if you're if you've created something new, you're co-creators and co-heirs with who? Christ. God. You're creating. That means the mind 
The spirit of man is the ultimate control mechanism of, of reality. This intelligent and uh, conscious and intelligent manipulation of this zone is how they create this reality of hell. You have the power to shift your reality. If it were not so, so, so much time and effort wouldn't be used to keep mankind in a constant state of confusion. The intelligent manipulation of this unseen mechanism is stealing our light from us. No longer. Let him that stole what? Steal no more. Neither give power to the devil. I love y'all. Devil is a word. It's to make an idol or false god. It's to cal calumniate, to charge falsely and knowingly with a crime or offense, to propagate evil reports with a design to injure the reputation of another. Give no power to that devil. Let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for anointing this messenger with this message today. And let the seed continue to fall on good ground and bud forth and bring forth much fruit. And let thine word not return unto you void, but let it accomplish that which you please and prosper in everything where you send it. In your precious son's name we pray. And by the way, uh, Isaiah 55, 5 is where I get that. And I want to read this to y'all. Because this has been one of my favorite scriptures for a very long time. And up until recently, I didn't understand it. I just It just it stuck with me for a long time. Uh, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but wandereth the earth, and making it uh, bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower. Remember what he said about the body is, is the seed. The seed of, of the body is in man. It's not this seed anywhere else. Okay? And bread to the eater. Remember, I am the bread of life. We're not talking about the bread which uh, the fathers in the wilderness are dead. We're talking about the bread of life. Okay? So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth, that shall not return unto me void. To make something void is to give it no power. That means to man is a hypocrite. He says, but what? Does not. But it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. For you shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing. Well, can mountains and hills sing, folks? All mountains, all hills, all. Everything in the Bible is talking about men. you got to correctly apply it. But it's talking about men. And all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Well, hold up, folks. Do trees have hands? Huh? No. Instead of the thorn shall come up the fir tree. And instead of the briar, which chokes the life out of the seed, remember that? Shall come up the myrtle tree, and it shall be to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign that it shall not be cut off. Hey, listen, folks, this, the beauty of the scriptures and what they evoke is something most people go their whole lives uh, missing out on. What we intend to do with this study is continue to grow, uh, continue to discipline our uh, our disciples and learn to love correctly and apply it correctly in all situations hey take care folks love y'all